Hi there, Leah. Um, I I am also wanting to wanting to live in an intentional community. Um, and yeah, I've been I've, it's been my focus for the last almost year or so. Well, ever since I found out about them, um, I was really excited when I first found out about them. I was like, what? A whole community of like like-minded people, you know, growing their own food. Could this be possible? And yeah, so I've been focused on that very much uh, ever since I found out. Um, so the I have done quite a bit of research on it, um, and I haven't lived in one yet. But um, but on Vancouver Island, I did visit one on Vancouver Island because um, I lived in Victoria for eight years. So. Um, but I only found out about them last year. Uh, so there's one in, on Vancouver Island. Um, it's about 45 minutes away from Victoria, uh, which I believe that's where your sister is living, if, if I'm up to date on what's going on and stuff like that. Um, uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful city. Really good place for artists. Um, and so it's called, it's called R Eco Village, O-U-R. Um, that stands for something, I can't remember what though. But uh, yeah, I, I visited them and uh, I think they've been established for about 10 years and yeah, they have a lot of like, they're really, you know, um, that kind of doing good, I guess. They're, you know, um, they can garden almost all, all year round because it doesn't snow there. It does get cold in the winter, but, um, but yeah, they can pretty much, you know, grow certain foods all year round and stuff. Um, in the summer, they can grow almost, almost anything like um, kiwis and um, probably not pineapples. I'm not too sure, but uh, but I think the most exotic they get is around is like kiwis and stuff. Um, and they have apple trees and st stuff like that. And so uh, they have uh, most of the housing there is um, cob housing, and they also have like um, uh, they have weekend sem uh, not seminars, but weekend uh, what do you call it? Um, kind of like. Um, uh, training, training uh, courses on how to build, how to build with cob or straw bale, um, and also yurts. They have a lot of yurts there, about like maybe five. They, have, I think they have about five yurts and a few other buildings, um, and made out of um, cob and stuff. And yeah, it's a really nice little community. Um, but uh, I moved away from Vancouver Island, and now I'm up north of BC. Actually, it's the geographical center of BC, um, and there's there's no eco village up here. But I'm here because of family. But uh, my my intention is to is to uh, establish kind of establish myself here and uh, get a get like a home base for me and my kids, um, so we can have something to come back to every year. Because I, I definitely want to, I, I want to in the next year and a half, two years, I would like to go um, go to an eco village, like probably in uh, I'm hoping in Costa Rica or um, or maybe Ecuador. I've mo mostly I've um, I've been researching the ones in Costa Rica. I actually was looking at some in Hawaii. There's one I believe it's on the Big Island. Um, I think it's on the eastern part of the Big Island. Um, it's called Cinderland. Um, and that one seemed like, you know, pretty, pretty reasonable, reasonably priced, you know, to live there. It didn't really seem like they, um, it didn't really seem like they were too motivated though for, you know, like the ideas that you have. Um, which, which by the way, I think those are really awesome ideas. Um, the ones that I was really interested in in Costa Rica are are the ones I have a I have a mosquito circling around me. I don't usually kill bugs, but mosquitoes are really obnoxious. Um, but uh, yeah, the the ones that I that I was looking that I was looking at in Costa Rica and really interested in are the ones that are like just really progressive, I guess. The ones that are really you know just doing a lot like. Uh, like really reaching out and to, um, to you know to the surrounding community and you know and in um, just uh, wanting to wanting to help and and heal and stuff um, like basically the ones that I've really been interested in are the ones with healing centers there or at, or opportunities for healing centers because um, well that's that's like kind of my my field of um, 
uh, of work that I would like to get into. Uh, I've taken two Theta Healing um, classes. I've taken the um, just the basic and then the advanced, and those were really really good, uh, really inspiring. But I lack the confidence to put myself out there. Um, YouTube is helping with that, though. I'm getting more confident in getting myself out there. Um, but in uh, in November, I would like to go to Vancouver and take the uh, Reconnective Healing training. Uh, that's a weekend course. Uh, and I'm really, really excited about that because my experience with Reconnective Healing has been really amazing. Um, my, my mom and dad are both are both uh, reconnective healers and uh, I've had a few sessions and they've been really really good they've helped me uh, so much so um, so yeah I would like to do that and I, I would like to have the opportunity when I do find one I would like to have the opportunity to um, you know to help people through reconnective healing and possibly theta healing as well um, so yeah the one that I choose to go to um, I would I would like it to have a, a healing center, um, and so I'll mention a few of them. A few of the ones in, in Costa Rica. Uh, one of the ones was uh, the Reconnect. Or sorry, that's uh, the uh, the Revolution Project, and that one seemed really really like their their kind of goal. I guess was like is like to you know um, help people go into their heart, which is like that's like my goal definitely like. Our goals definitely coincide, and they have a healing center there as well. Um, and but they're a, they're a little bit dogmatic. Like uh, I don't know, I haven't been there personally, but I've dissected their website up and down, kind of thing. And um, they seem like amazing, awesome, driven people. But uh, but they're but yeah, they um, I I don't know. You know, I I think I would have to go there to really see, get the vibe and stuff like that. The vibe that I get from the website is like they believe what they believe, and they're not they're not wanting to pressure anybody else in you know in believing what they believe, but uh, but they also want kind of like-minded people living with them. So I don't know. That's kind of like a an open closed kind of thing, you know. Um, so so I guess I I would have to I would have to go around and kind of. Um, kind of visit the ones that I want to go to to really get the vibe. The other one was um, Pachamama, which is like it, it's it looks amazing and awesome, but it had more of a businessy feel than I'm comfortable with. You know, like um, like they in, I don't know like I, again I would have to go there and see, but it seemed like it seemed like they had a store there where you like they have a I guess gardens and stuff like that, but instead of instead of everybody. Uh, contributing and just you know uh, eating together and all that stuff. Um, there's gardens there, organic gardens, and then um, you buy the food, which is like you know not really not really ideal for me. And then there's um, uh, let's see, uh, Eco Loco. Um, I heard is really good one, but I haven't been there. Um, yeah, I heard that uh, like. Yeah, I heard that it's just really beautiful around there. Um, and then there's there's lots of them that have websites and stuff like that, but they're they're it's very it's very difficult to um, to really get the feel from a website unless the website is really really good and thorough and stuff. And oh, there is um, uh, Punta Mona. That one. Like I don't think there's any families there. I'm looking for one with a family, cause I, or you know, with different families there. Um, but if I was like a, like single or a couple without kids, I would I would totally go I would totally go to Punta Mona, cause just um, yeah, just the uh, the guy that founded it just really seems like he's just got this zest for food. He's just like in love with like the fresh food and really excited about it and stuff and. So that's really that's really cool. I really I really dig that. Um, so yeah, I would I would definitely I would definitely check that out. Um, uh, but again, it, that that has more of a like it has a permaculture kind of um, it has a perm it's leaning towards permaculture and it has like permaculture uh, internships and stuff like that um, and not so much like on like the spiritual side of things. Um, 
yeah, and I mean, like, I would, I would totally be open to, uh, to being a part of a community um, that is just starting up as well. Um, I don't have very much money to offer, but, uh, but you know, I do have, I do have my skills like uh, theta healing, and then also, you know, in November, reconnective healing. Uh, so I'm hoping to, I hope, hoping to offer those skills. To any place, you know, any place that that I that I choose, or that uh, that I, I guess, any place that the that the cosmic flow takes me. <laughs> um, this video is probably getting kind of long, but I did want to say a few other things about um, about um, community gardens and stuff like that. I I just I just. I totally, completely, 100% agree that community gardens should be a part of every, every community. It's just, it just seems ridiculous not to have it. Like, like in the video that, that, that I saw you in, there was like this beautiful green space behind you. And I was like, that could be a garden. That could be made into a garden. So there's so many, like, so many places in, in so many towns that you could just, you could make, you know, it would be just perfect for gardens, and, um, but yet, you know, they don't, and it totally would take the ease, or it would take, it would ease the, you know, um, the pressure of, uh, of the modern food, you know, um, supply and demand and stuff, and, yeah, it just, I, I definitely, I definitely believe in that, and also, um, I agree, food is not food anymore, Conventional food is just not food. It's a shallow, it's a shallow imitation of what it used to be, and it's just I look at it sometimes, and sometimes I taste it. And I'm just like, you think you're a strawberry? Come on, I know what a real strawberry tastes like. No, no fooling me, you know. Um, so I and monoculture as well. Oh my goodness, monoculture. Oh, it just like. It just totally leaches all of the nutrients out of the soil. Like, if if it's just the same thing, it just like it just it just sucks all the nutrients out of it. So like, if you think about how how you know how much how many times it's been it's been harvested in monoculture, and it's been like fifty years sometimes of like using the same kind of soil for use and producing the same kind of thing, you know, and you think about that and it's like, uh, it's just like, how, how many, how much nutrients can that actually have, you know? And I think, I think when we start, um, when we start just eating stuff that like, that is grown, you know, in, in a permaculture like setting and stuff and with really good soil, um, and organically, obviously, um, I think that we'll have to eat less of it because we'll just we'll actually just be getting more nutrients out of less things, you know, out of less uh, um, mass, I guess. Uh, so I completely agree with permaculture and uh, and and healing, like uh, you know, holistic healing and stuff. So I'm totally on board for for eco villages. I just need to find I just need to find one that fits me and my family. Uh, so, yeah, uh, if you yeah like uh, if you and Felipe uh, you know create one, definitely I would be very interested. I would be very interested in um, in checking that out. Um, and I'm always wanting to you know I'm always wanting to help. Always wanting to help people. Um, Help people heal and go into their heart, and uh, there would be a, an amazing setting to do that in. Um, I think that's about all I had to say. Um, so yeah, I love you all very much, um, and good luck. Good luck. Uh, yeah. Bye bye.